Hey everybody, Daniel here from Basement Tech. Well, this is the latest exciting project from the Zim Knives, Zim Tech, Basement Tech collaboration. You can see it's a kiln that's capable of some very high temperatures. This was actually a rebuild of a salvaged kiln um, that ended up looking like this uh, in the end. Before we get there though, let me take just about 60 seconds and tell you the history of this thing. Here's what it looked like uh, in the beginning. It was literally uh, found on the side of a street. On the other side, it says um, K-I-L-N-E-F-R-E-E. -E. So it was a free giveaway thrown on the side of the road. Luckily, you can see uh, most of the ceramics and things were um, still intact, which was a huge bonus. So, but the big question uh, became, uh, does it actually operate? So are the heating elements good? Um, how about the thermocouple and what kind of control does it have? Well, you can see in this picture, I'm showing that it's a transformer open loop control. Basically, the front uh, panel uh, selector chooses a winding on this transformer that just puts a, a steady amount of heat, a fixed amount of heat into the oven. And that uh, sets the temperature probably as long as the door is closed. Some experimentation yielded that, yeah, the heaters were still good, and that was a real, really big uh, bonus. The thermocouple, however, was, um, let's just say, old. When I looked at it in detail and started to look at the end of it, it actually crumbled in my hand. So we had to get a new thermocouple, but that was not so bad, uh, considering how much of it was actually uh, still um, viable. Okay, well, the first step was to find a new thermocouple. I searched around on Amazon and found a really nice one from MN Measurements Instruments uh, out of Minnesota, I believe. It's a K-type thermocouple capable of 2,372 degrees Fahrenheit, an 8-gauge one, which is quite heavy duty and should last quite a long time. The next component we needed was some way to turn the heater on and off, and I selected a nice name brand um, solid state relay that I found on eBay for about $15. By the way, the thermocouple cost about $33 on Amazon. The final component, major component, is to add some kind of a controller. And I want to talk about that for a minute because there's these remarkable little micro mega temperature controllers that have been around for decades but continue to perform very well. This was the initial test setup. You can see sticking out of the back of the kiln itself is that new thermocouple, the K-type thermocouple. And uh, there mounted to the heat sink is a 25 amp 220 volt solid state relay. The heater only draws about 10 or 12 amps when full heating, but I wanted to provide plenty of margin. And in our tests, that uh, heat sink stayed completely cold during all of the testing. The final component is that micro mega um, PID temperature controller. As I said, these devices have been around for quite some time, decades even and live in very, very harsh environments controlling some very complicated processes on factory floors and in um, chemical plants and, and all kinds of things where temperature control or any kind of process control is necessary. They come in quite a variety of configurations and I'm showing this page here not to talk through it in too much detail, but to give you that idea that, um, yeah, these things are made to control pretty much any process based on any input and producing many, many varieties of uh, output. The particular controller that you see here is one that I picked up at a ham fest a few years ago for, I think, $25. It's the CN77333. That indicates the square form factor in dual mechanical relay outputs. While not ideal for this application, I think we can make it work. A quick note on where to find these. There are many, many of them available on eBay. Do note that some of them, the original Micro Megas, are several decades old and continue to function uh, perfectly. I did purchase a second one for, I think, again, around $30. But I noted that the price range on eBay uh, varies widely, everything from like $25 up to $200. Um, so buyer beware, do your research. Um, there are also clones available. I know nothing about that, but it might be a way to save some money. Um, again, do your research. As I mentioned several times, this is a full-blown PID controller. 
I'm not going to talk too much about PID here, but do I'm going to put this graphic up to um, entice you to perhaps go find out more about this uh, remarkable algorithm that's used in everything from temperature control, as you see here, to motion control, to chemical plant control. It's a remarkable algorithm that, again, has been around for quite some time, but it continues to find more and more uh, novel applications. So back to our test setup. The basic circuit is really pretty straightforward. The thermocouple is fed into the controller, and based on the PID algorithm's output, that 12 volt power supply is used to switch the solid state relay on and off in a proportional way to achieve the desired temperature. You can see in the end we did achieve uh, about 1400 degrees uh, as attested to by my son the knife maker it's pretty darn hot. That 1475 degrees is a pretty important um, temperature for knife makers used in the hardening process of the metal uh, that's used to make the knife. Quick work was made of stripping out all of the old controls, sanding off all of the old rust, repainting, filling the holes that were unnecessary, and beginning construction. Here you can see the fit up of some of the new indicators. Note that this plate, it's very cleverly designed. It actually slides into the main frame of the kiln, um, can be pulled in and out uh, for service. So that's pretty cool. We'll give way here to a little bit of a flyby of the midpoint of the construction and then actually just get on to some final testing. A lot of convective air movement is provided by those large holes in the bottom and some smaller holes in the top of the frame but I thought it would be a good idea to add that little fan just to stir up the air to prevent any heat from settling. In addition I would constructed a thin metal heat shield and that's why all of the components are kind of gathered toward the middle to make sure they're under that heat shield. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't take any uh, pictures of that, but you can see it when I show some of the testing that's coming up. Well, first power up. A conservative 575 degree set point is indicated on the bottom. As the kiln overcomes its mass, it's kind of slow going in the beginning, but we did definitely achieve that 575 degrees predictably. A quick tour of the indicators, the main power switch on the lower left, that neat neon sort of retro light is just the main power. On the right you have the lower left green indicator is just uh, the presence of 12 volts and that red LED indicates when heat is being called for. The lower right one is blue and is reserved for maybe future Wi-Fi connectivity. What you might have observed at the beginning of this test is that although we hadn't reached a thousand degrees, heat was not being called for. This is the PID algorithm working at its best. It constantly learns the response of the mass of the kiln in response to the heat that it injects and adjusts its coefficients accordingly such that it can creep up on that thousand degrees with a minimum amount of overshoot. Throughout all the testing, I was making a lot of measurements with my infrared thermometer. Here finally, as we were going for broke with the temperature set to 1475 degrees, and after it had achieved 1475 degrees, I was furiously making uh, many, many more measurements just to make sure we weren't melting anything. Turns out, the combination of those holes, the fan, and the heat shield did its job and the electronics stayed in a very reasonable range. Okay, with the back all buttoned up, we're calling this one a success. As always, if you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have comments, put those in the comments below. If you really, really like it, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.